Hello, my friends. Welcome to Kev's Vibe of the Day. My name is Kevin, and this is Friday, the 9th of uh, July 2021. So let's get right to it and see what the cards have to say today. Here we go. All right, then. I have um, been sitting here for a while contemplating, hey, Mr. Horace Chip, uh, what we were going to talk about. So thank you, angels, for reminding me of your presence and for bringing me your grace and gratitude. I am grateful to receive your information for today, Friday the 9th of July, 2021. All right, so spread the card, spread the card, spread the card, spread the cards. Oh, oh, look, they're doing a nice little circle today. Which one? Oh, mm, mm, let's go with this. Put them back together again. Oh, there's a several, well... I'm just going to go with the one that came out the top. Oh, cancel, clear, and release. Well, we haven't seen this one before. I think this has to do with anything and everything that is plaguing the forefront of your heart and your mind. And the focus of today is to clear out anything and everything that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. We can all be drawn into something that is not necessarily for our highest good as a way to mask, get in front of, and disguise a deeper level of discontent that lies underneath. Clear, cancel and release. In the image, we see a powerful angel that is clearing the energetic space that surrounds them. And clearing, cancelling, releasing is just really your ability to release and let go of the trappings and the anchors that have been weighing on your heart, your mind, and your whole body for a while. You're being guided by this card to clear out the negative energy and the challenging people. It's time for you to rise up, step forward, and move on, which is hard to do it when we are bogged down with the complacency and complaints that other people have within them that are on their shoulders. This reminds me of situations in my own life where I haven't really cleared, cancelled and released the energetic parts of me that protects my own space, my personal space. The part of me that when the phone goes off and you know it's somebody that really needs your help, but they get to offload, but you get to take it on. And I've taken on sometimes the burdens that I find myself becoming bothered by. And then that somehow ends up someplace that I forget where it is and it piles up. Angel wisdom here wants you to know the power of your words, your thoughts, and your intentions, yours, not other people's. If you're saying something, even in a even in a jovial way, particularly about yourself, you might have a negative effect on you. Or if you're expressing of what you're saying that you want to have happen isn't real. You're being encouraged to be more loving towards yourself. Clear and cancel and let go of anything you no longer want in your life in order to make room for love and, and positivity and peace. We have to give up the things that weigh us down. So if you're having those dark thoughts or saying those dark things and you wish you hadn't had those thoughts or said those dark things, you've got the capacity within you and the energy rising from above you and below you to say powerful affirmations of clear, cancel, release. The angels are always here to help you clear anything that could be standing in your way of inner peace. 
You've been encouraged to clear any clutter from your life. The dust that's building up, the stuff that's accumulating around your house and your home, your vehicles. Clearing your energetic space is like clearing your psychic space. Just make some simple changes to clear the clutter. And then you find how much freedom there is in that. I think that kind of makes sense. Time to do a little tidying. A summer clean. All right, let's read from Melody Beatty and then we'll get to our um, meditation. Learn to focus your energy. Make sense? I've come to this lodge for one reason, the woman who wrote the book said. A retreat and Williamette Forest. I bought my fiddle. And I'm not leaving until I can play a bluegrass tune. If I want to get out, if I want to get out of here, I better learn to play. There's a time to be open, almost unfocused, as we take in the world, the universe and what it's showing us. There's a time to get out of our heads and quietly take a journey within our hearts, following with openness and the wonderment of a child. But there are also times to aim our attention and focus our energy on what we want to accomplish. Instead of floundering with scattered thoughts and possibilities, we choose one, then act on it. We stay in step with the natural rhythm, but we're pulling out scattered attention. We're pulling our scattered attention together and focusing it as part of that rhythm. To do it, we may have to we may have to work through or push away inner distractions. Moving through our inner obstacles enables us to accomplish our goal. Whether that's a task, a particular piece of work, or learning to play the fiddle. Is there something you want to do? Is your heart urging you to learn something, accomplish something, or go somewhere? Do something, make a go do something, make it a goal, focus your energy, learn to stay focused until you reach that goal. Put yourself in the cabin and don't let yourself out until it's done. Oh, that's such a powerful message. We do it. We, we set ourselves up for these really monumental tasks and we put that intention out there. And then the universe brings us what we're looking for, right? But then there's that nagging ego that wants to keep us safe in that worry, in the second guessing, in the walking around and around and around in circles, driving our mind nuts until we pull the Band-Aid off. And the Band-Aid can simply look at, do you really want this? Is this really what you're looking to do? Do you really think this is going to make you happy, going to solve your problems? And if it is, keep going. But instead, we kind of fall into those old habits because they become part of who we are, particularly when you're experiencing expansion and growth. Expansion and growth brings with it a vulnerability, and the vulnerability lands in a place that we don't know what's going to happen next. We have a sneaky suspicion based only on a time and a place that we've already been through, a hurdle we already jumped over. A situation we already surmounted, survived and moved through. We've already done that. That lesson, that class has been graduated. We've moved on. But we're still at the place where we don't quite know what's next. The big fear is, I don't want to get this wrong. The big fear is, I'm going to make a big mess of this. The big fear is, other people are going to know my secret. The big fear is that lie that I've been hiding and I've been covering up and I've been making excuses for is going to get exposed. Those are tall stories that haven't happened, may never happen, but are happening in your head. Remember, what you put your focus on, what you put your energy to, what you actually say you are looking to achieve will occur. It's going to come. And the, ta the tendency is that we put our focus and attention on the stuff that doesn't work. 
the stuff that keeps on round and round in circles. The chatter in the shower, on the way home, the distractions. Oh, maybe if I go get an ice cream. Oh, you know what? I feel like this for dinner. Oh, I want to go treat myself. Because to deal with the real truth, the real issue, which is, I am a powerful piece of the universe and I'm going to move forward no matter what. That is not a person we recognize. That powerful leader, that powerful master that sits within you, that's busting the doors open, that says, come on world, I'm here. That person has not been seen in a long time. Because that person was probably told, sit down, be quiet. Do as you're told. No, 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 no. You cannot do that. That is not right for you. You can hear that voice, the discipline. Yes, I think children need to understand boundaries for sure. But when it becomes a point with which your boundary, whether you are five or 50, has become so compounded that you feel locked in this prison of the past, it can be a bit daunting when you take on bit by bit this angelic awakening, this um, higher frequency level. It can be un easy when those gates and those shackles that kept you where you are open and there's this smell of freedom, the taste of freedom, the touch of freedom, the feeling of gratitude and grace, the feeling of love, the feeling of this overwhelming sense that you wake up and realize, oh my goodness, I asked for this and I got it. I welcomed this and here it is. And there's that brief moment where who you used to be is getting further and further and further away. And there's a part of your ego that wants to hold on to that. Feel bad, feel this, you shouldn't, you can't. We make up the stories to try to trot back down memory lane. It's okay to take a trot down memory lane and to think and see how it brought us where we are. How we did jump the hurdles, push through the barriers, stand up and take notice, be counted, be seen, be loved, be cherished, be who we want to be. That's the memory lane we need to go down. The memory lane that brought us to the success that we currently enjoy, brought us the blessings that we currently have. Not to keep us rooted in the quicksand of crazy. So there's two ways to look at it. Take a bath, wash it off, clear, cancel, and release, go through some cupboards. A good way to start is a spice rack in your kitchen. You know, you think you've got that bottle of spice or that jar of spice or that thing. You don't know for sure. So at your grocery store, you buy another one. And then you get home, you realize you had it. And you know, just didn't have one, you had two or three or four. Can't tell you how many things of paprika I got down there. And I don't really know what paprika tastes like, but I got two or three tubs of the stuff. <laughs> <I'm> just <laughs> There you go. So these are the things, little by little. Then there's that drawer somewhere in your house where you've pushed the bills and the letters and the old envelopes and the saved a note from somebody and a recipe from somewhere else. Get that out, dump it on the table. And trust me, if you haven't seen it, looked at it, read it, done anything with it, don't put it on the table and sort it. Find a circular bin and toss it. Better still, if you're able to light a bonfire and that's a bunch of paper in a drawer, set light to it. It's okay to go through old photographs. It's okay to do that. And when in doubt, I don't know, scan them. Make a digital copy of them. We live in a digital world. These are little tiny things you get to unclutter this. There's the other end of that that seems to be my reality lately, where you've done the uncluttering, you have tidied up your world, you've cleaned up your act, you don't have these things hanging around. And it's a bit like the echo chamber after you've left a house or an apartment or a room that you've been renting or a place that you've been at. And it's empty. 
and you're sweeping up the debris and you're sweeping up the dust and the bits and pieces, there's that space that exists between who you are and who you have been is no longer. But yet you still get that little echo, that little feeling of how this piece of your life was resonating and vibrating with that place in that space. The spit like the bridge between the two worlds. The space between letting go of one trapeze swing before you catch the other. That part of, oh, this is the vortex. <gasps> and if you follow Esther Hicks when she channels Abraham, that vortex is the space between desire and manifestation. And in the vortex is where you catch on to belief. Belief is something that is not physically you can touch it. Not physically you can see it, feel it, and have it, and hold it. Belief is the energy that pulls it forward. Belief is the magnet that's going to get you where you're supposed to be. So think of the vortex, the space between what was, what is going to be, the intention and the manifestation. The vortex is the desire, the feeling. Get in there and then be grateful that it's already here. Grateful that it was smooth. Grateful that it was easy. Grateful that it was it had dotted every I and crossed every T on the contract. Grateful that this is going to be for your highest good. Grateful that whatever you have chosen is going to manifest itself for the highest good of everybody. And then done. All right, let's meditate. I'm going to start with our prayer protection. So take a big breath in. Take the space you want. Stretch out. Move your shoulders back. Open your fingers up. Bring your palms to the roof. Just to um, bring you to a sense that you are here. You're now. You're in the present moment. You are part of this vast, amazing planet, this galaxy. You are an important piece of the energy. And then open yourself up to that concept. Take a big breath in. <sighs> Release, let go, shake off anything and everything that gets in the way of who you are meant to be and who you were created to be right now. Generate the deepest breath you have. Activate your lungs, activate your whole physical skeletal system. Let all that air in. Release, blast out whatever does not need to be here, whatever's getting in your way, your blockages, your debris, your scattered energy, your lack of focus, let it all go. Thank you, Archangel Michael, for removing me and cutting the ties for any people, places, situations, stories, drama, and any unnecessary nonsense that I no longer need and no longer serves my purpose. I'm grateful that you cut those ties right now. I am safe. I am free. And picture the love, the blue light, the blue sword. And just imagine Archangel Michael, the most powerful Archangel of the, of the universe that's come to take away anything and everything that doesn't serve you. The attachments, the barbs. Cutting them, snipping them, removing them, releasing you from them. Shake yourself free if you can think of that. Now from above your head, see a beautiful magenta pink light shining down on you like a spotlight. Aiming straight for the crown of your head. Coming through the stellar gateway, your soul star. And filling you up around you with this beautiful pink magenta light. Think of the LED light going down your spine and out through your fingers in every single bone of your body. Let this pink light surround the room, take care of the building that you're in, and then bleed on out into the streets, into the town, into the city, so that it's touching anything and everything that you can think of coming in contact with. 
And then we say, thank you, Archangel Metatron and your angels of sacred geometry for clearing the energetic space around me. Thank you for clearing all the lower vibrational energies, stagnancies and blockages that stand in my way of love. I welcome in your energy as you transmute, transform the energy around me, in front of me, below me, above me, in all directions, into a space of love. And so it is. And find a smile on your face, gratitude in your heart. The things that you are grateful for, grateful for hearing this, grateful for lifting your heart, grateful for opening yourself up to the leader, the powerful being that you were actually created to be is here now. Surround yourself in angelic light. Think of and feel all of those powerful energies around you like dancing light bulbs. Spheres, every time you see a small twinkle, a round ball of light energy, floating like June bucks. They are your angels. They are your spirit guides. And they love you. They are proud of you. They're lifting you, opening you up for greater things, bigger things. Helping you to cancel, clear, and release Anything and everything stands in your way of greatness. Place your right hand on your heart space. Place your left hand on your belly space. Make an affirmation. I am the keeper of my mind and my body and wherever love is present, fear is a stranger and then give yourself a big juicy hug, wrap yourself up. Love is here within me, so it is and so shall it be. Allow your consciousness to settle on a big light coming from way up. You can call it North Star, I call it Beyond the Stellar Gateway, the highest point. This is source energy. And source energy has brought you and your guardian angel together at this moment, at this time. And feel your guardian angel wrapping themselves around you, coming in behind you, bringing you strength, bringing you the power that they have and you're giving them the power that you have. Creating a spiritual force field as part of the sacred geometry that you are. The love within you, the power within you, the essence and energy that lives within you is radiating outward in every direction. Affirm, believe, and attract. Everything that is for your highest good and the highest good of all concerned. Bring your hands towards the ceiling. Open yourself up. Your feet are flat on the floor. There's a golden light coming from source energy. You can also call this energy universal energy. It's also known as God. This energy is very similar to a power source. It is replenishing your being. It's connected to you by your internal flame also known as the eternal flame, also known as the light of your heart space. And 
your soul's energy comes from this light. This light lives at the center of your being, deep within the well. It is an infinite well of love and goodness. Tapping into the energy of source allows this love and goodness to rise to the surface. This infinite well of love shines out and radiates out from me in all directions, from you, in all directions, from us, in all directions. And it radiates out and then returns, multiplied. The love that's radiating out from you, up from you, down from you, behind you, all around you is shining bright beyond your skin, being energized by the powerful source of source energy, protected by God, protected by the universe. This light's being grounded and loved by the Mother Earth. She who transmutes and transforms all energy into light, bright source. You are grounded far below the earth. You are tethered far above the sky and you are anchored in every direction to truth to goodness, to power. This cosmic light that lights within you is touching all that come in contact with you. Their cosmic light is being attracted to you as you are to theirs. The vibrational love, goodness, positivity, that is radiating out from you is attracting the same from others. The use of this love and this goodness is never ending. The supply is endless. It's infinite, meaning there is no end, there is no beginning. It is a constant flow of goodness. From this very moment forward, everything you do, everything you touch, everything you create, everything you attract is for your highest good. And so it is. Allow yourself to breathe. Allow yourself the quiet silence. Be grateful for your archangel, your guardian angel, your spirit guides and your Christed light beings for, for surrounding you, for communicating with you and for assisting you in the removal of anything that no longer serves your purpose. And you may push pause at this point and continue your meditation. When you feel complete, bring your hands to the center of your chest, honoring yourself for completing your daily physical practice. 
but daily spiritual practice. Lift your thumbs to your third eye center and together we honor the world, ourselves and everybody in it as we bow and say namaste. And to you, my friends, thank you so much. Please like, subscribe, share. Um, to anyone and everybody you know is perhaps struggling with clearing off the stuff that's bothering them, um, giving them a space to grow and learn and expand. And um, I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.